Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. Hold on tight. Things can get a bit weird. If you like that sort of thing. Hey, welcome to the program. It is the Ron Van Dam Show. I am Ron Van Dam. Thanks for being here. Hi. I don't know what the hell that was. Uh, hey. Hi. How you doing up there on the ceiling? That's where the camera is. Uh, I do this uh, once a week out of this uh, studio in Easton, Massachusetts. A lovely place. Nice atmosphere. No room service. Uh, but otherwise, it's very, very nice. <laughs> Uh, just so uh, we get this straight, so uh, we're not fooling around here. Uh, I do this every single weekday. I've been doing it for 30 years, uh, 25 years on the radio, and about uh, five, eight, maybe nine years uh, also simultaneously doing it as a podcast. Because before that, when I started this thing, there were no such things as podcasts. Nobody knew what that was. Uh, you can uh, hear me every single weekday uh, on NewEnglandBroadcasting.com, RonVanDam.com, uh, all the platforms, the Amazon Music and the Apple Podcasts and Stitcher and Spotify and Gratify and Hopeify and Sick of Time and uh, all the other things there, uh, TuneIn Radio, Whatever, whatever. Anyway, that's it. Let's get that out of the way. Thank you so much. How are you? Good to be with you. Uh, you cannot answer me. They're rhetorical questions. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if in life everything was just rhetorical, where nobody would actually give you an answer to the point where you had to hear what their response was? Wouldn't it be great? Like, hey, how you doing? And then nothing, because it's rhetorical. Don't answer that. I don't care. It's rhetorical. <laughs> it's funny because when you say hi to somebody, you don't just say hi, you say hi, how you doing? And you don't realize when you're saying that, you're opening things up for a response. Be careful next time. Well, uh, here we are, you and me. Uh, the idea of this show is to uh, talk about things that we all go through, but uh, most of us don't stop and say, hey, wait a minute, that makes no sense. That's what I do. I realized recently, I, I, uh, this is television, so you can see that I am a little bit older than 13 years old. Just a tad. I've been bar mitzvahed, or whatever they call that thing. And, uh, yeah, I'm a little older, and I've learned that, you know, it's about time that I lied a little bit. I've been a fairly honest person most of my life. I stretched the truth. Because I'm a performer and an entertainer, you have to stretch the truth to make that interesting. <laughs> People are not interesting as is. You have to embellish and all that stuff. So I decided a few things. First of all, I decided that for now on, I am going to be a doctor. That doesn't mean I'm going to medical school. No. A, I can't afford it. B, who wants to do that? Sit in the classroom, listen to people blab all day. No, I want to be a doctor uh, with just the title is all I want. I mean, I don't want the job. I don't even want the money or the salary. I just want the title. So I have now deemed myself doctor. What I did was I went on to uh, Word there in my, uh, my computer, Word Up, whatever they call that, um, Excel. I don't know. And I printed out myself a, uh, a diploma. So, uh, so now I'm a doctor. But I only use it, I don't use it to save people's lives because I don't know how to do that. I know with the Heimlich Manure, I, I don't know, <laughs> I said Heimlich Manure by mistake. Did you hear that? I shouldn't have pointed that out. Most people didn't even, eh. I, I don't know the Heimlich Maneuver. I think you simply just hug somebody really hard and fast. Uh, but I don't know it. I'm not going to save anybody's lives. I, I don't know anything like that. But I just want the title is all I want. I want to get a table at a restaurant really quickly when it's busy. And it always seems to be these days, especially on weekend nights. So I want to walk up to that little podium where they have the uh, host or the hostess, or I don't know what they call that now, the, the, the person. 
And, uh, and I walk up and uh, I'd say, I'd like a table, please. And they say, okay, we'll put you on the list. Uh, your name, please? Uh, Dr. Van Dam. Oh, Dr. Van Dam. We do have a lovely table with strolling violinists and free bottles of champagne in the corner. Follow me, doctor. Yeah. Uh, it works, uh, I think. So I want to be doctor. I want to throw that name around. I don't have to prove it, really. I don't have to be a medical doctor. There, You can be a doctor of, of anything as long as you make believe that you took a course in something. Uh, I, it would probably be a doctor of philosophy. Um, and, of course, the job that you get when you graduate uh, and become a doctor of philosophy, your job becomes manager at McDonald's. You know that, don't you? It means nothing to me, uh, a doctor of philosophy. A, I, don't, I don't know. A PhD, a PHO, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't really mean anything. So so that's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be a doctor for now. On Next time you see me in public, and I hope that never happens, um, please address me as doctor. Because if you don't, I won't even turn around. I have, and I think I've discussed it on, on this um, thing before in this studio, uh, I have gone out of my way uh, within my lifetime. It's in my bucket list. It's uh, number seven. I've gone out of my way to have some prominent position um, in society, but only for a short period of time, just so I can say I did it. It's a bucket list thing. Uh, I've tried to be the Pope many, many times. I've sent my application in, along with a headshot wearing a large hat. I figured that would help. I've sent that in. Uh, I got to tell you something. I haven't even gotten a phone call or even a letter in the mail acknowledging that they received my application and my resume. Nothing. Nothing from them. And I think that's rude. Uh, I even sent a letter at a point about two years later and said, you know what? I don't even want to be Pope. I don't even want to be Pope anymore because you people don't even uh, acknowledge me. Claim to be so, uh, you know, so nice and, and uh, all that, but they don't even respond to my resume. So I don't think I'm going to become Pope. Uh, then I decided, well, uh, perhaps I should be king because there was an opening, as you know, recently. Uh, Queen Elizabeth stepped aside in a very definitive manner. And um, for some reason, they chose somebody from the same family to take the throne. Uh, so now there's a King Charles III. Like, I don't even know who the other two were. I never met him. But my God, uh, uh, talk, talk about... Uh, that's not right. That's not right. You can't bring somebody in from your own family. That's nepotism. I had sent a letter to uh, Buckingham Palace or Lindsay Buckingham, I don't know which. Uh, again, with the headshot, this time without the big hat, this time I had a crown on. I went to Burger King, had a couple of Whoppers, so to speak, and um, took a crown with me because they don't stop you. They don't stop you when you take the crown out of the place. It's paper. It doesn't make any difference. But in the pictures, it looks real. So I sent that in to... Uh, to the place, uh, to the uh, to the palace, and um, again, no response. Not even a and not even a letter uh, saying thank you for applying for the position. Nothing, nothing. Um, I figured maybe an online uh, interview. Nothing. So now I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, and I I could have been king would have been so good for me. Because you don't have to do anything but greet people. And people bow and kiss your ring. That's a beautiful job. That's a nice job. You don't have to make any decisions. You don't lead anybody into battle anymore. I think at one point you did. You don't do that anymore. Uh, it's, it'd be great. But they, they, they chose somebody from their own family. From their, their own bloodline. I don't think that's acceptable in this country. Anyway, so I'm not going to be a uh, king. Then I found out through the grapevine, because I have a membership with a vineyard down the street, 
I found out through the grapevine that the uh, British Prime Minister Liz Truss, T-R-U-S-S, I don't know, and her first name is Liz. It's a little familiar for a Prime Minister, I have a feeling. <laughs> Perhaps Elizabeth would have been a little more, but no, it's Liz for some reason. Uh, Liz becomes a Prime Minister... When uh, Boris Yeltsin, what's his name there, Boris uh, Badenov, uh, Johnson, he leaves the thing. Uh, his own party kicks him out. They bring in Liz Trust. Truss. Uh, <laughs> she, uh, her first day on the job, she meets uh, Queen Elizabeth, and we all know how that turned out for both of them. That didn't work out. Uh, so anyway, so uh, her own party, the conservative party, her own party, kicks her out after a month. <laughs> wow. Wow. If only they had that in this country. That's something that might be viable, or at least would have been uh, in the not too, uh, not too recent past. Uh, yeah. So anyway, so uh, Liz is out after a month. And you're saying, Ron, why? Uh, tell me why she, uh, they kicked her out after a month. Uh, it's amazing they can even do that, but they did. And it was because uh, she she uh, raised taxes or something like that. I mean, she she gave people tax cuts without any way to make up for the money that she was cutting out of the fund. So uh, the conservative party said, "You're out of here, babe," and she was out. So immediately, I had gotten a call from uh, my employment agency, and they said, "There's an opening for British Prime Minister." Uh, when can you start? And I said, uh, almost immediately. So I get on the phone and I call uh, the Parliament, which is a place where they used to make cigarettes. And I said, hey, uh, I'm available. It's Ron. Uh, I, 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 I could have been Pope. I could have been King. But I'll do Prime Minister. Uh, but it, give me about a week to take care of some business over here and tie up some loose ends. And they said, uh, well, uh, Ron, we appreciate that. And we also enjoyed the headshot. But I'll tell you something. Uh, we already uh, hired a guy and we can't pronounce his name. So I said, oh, my God, that was quick. Uh, I, don't, I don't trust uh, the conservative party over there anyway. They, they only bring you in for a short period of time. They use you and then they kick you to the curb. It's not really nice. So uh, I cannot become prime minister. I cannot become a king nor pope, but I can call myself a doctor. No one can stop me. I can't practice medicine. I can't falsely perform the activities of these doctor types. But to say I'm one, harmless. Harmless. So, I'm working on that. Are you still there? <laughs> If you're still watching this, you are. This you've got to see some type of a therapist. Oh uh, man! You also know. You know what I wanted to do also because you can, apparently you can go online and you can get yourself uh, this thing. It's uh, I, I could become a justice of the peace. That's correct. That is correct. I could become a justice of the peace. I could marry people indiscriminately. I could just uh, say, uh, hey, uh, you, uh, you, sir, you and, and your lady, uh, boom, you're married. I'm a justice of the peace. I just married you. And, of course, they'd say, well, uh, that's, that's not my girlfriend. That's my sister. And I'd go, oh, sorry. I can't perform divorces, but my bad. Uh, yeah, justice of the peace. I like that because the word peace is in it, and I like peace. I, I was a hippie when I was younger. Well, I was a little, I don't know if I was a hippie as much as it was like a thyroid condition. But you can you can send away for that. I think it's like, I don't know, it's like 10 bucks or something, and you can become a justice of the peace, and you can uh, marry people. But as you probably know, uh, in this country, you're not really married until you have a marriage license. In other words, a license to suffer. All right, it's enough. <laughs> I, I've got to be a little bit careful here 
because I, I don't want to say anything that's disparaging to anybody or anything. By the way, if you find any of this to be uh, insulting or any, in any, uh, uh, it's, it's all humor. It's all humor. I don't believe in anything that I'm saying whatsoever. I'm not going to do anything. We're going to take a, a short uh, break, and then when we come back, uh, more program. We'll see what we can do here. Let's see what happens. Do you know that there is one item that can not only increase your home's beauty, but its value? That would be placemats. Hello, I'm George Karanapikopoulos, owner of George K's Wholesale Placemat Warehouse, your one stop for all your placemat needs. We have a placemat for every room of your house. That's right, placemats are not just for the dining room anymore. Anywhere you might make a spill, or maybe where you eat, like in front of the TV. I do it all the time like you. You want a placemat. We have fancy placemats, like in bamboo or teak. That's right, teak. Nice plastic laminate ones for no stains, even blue. We can custom make you placemats in as little as two weeks. Come to our showroom at the intersection of Route 27 and the Holbrook Turnpike. You're going to like what you see. Your placemat is waiting for you at George K's Wholesale Placemat Warehouse. Ready for your next good time out with friends? Then come to karaoke night at that bar near your house. Grab the mic and belt out your favorites or grab a drink. Sit back and enjoy the show. You'll see things like 12... Hello, this is Father Mike Slannery from the Our Lady of the Sacred Spatula Church here in town, and I'm excited to tell you about a thrilling new addition to our monthly Friday night bingo game lineup. In addition to classic favourites like Coverall and Four Corners, we'll now be adding Full Contact Bingo. That's right, Full Contact. That's where the friendly community game you love meets the heart hitting action of football and hockey that you crave. Is Mrs. Smith about to call bingo before you? Hit her with a cross check or crash her into the boards. I should mention that all full contact games will take place in the street hockey rink behind the parish function hall where the Our Lady of the Sacred Spatula Fighting Sons of Leviticus hold their matches. Protective gear is recommended and weapons are not allowed. And if you feel bad about taking out a friend or neighbour so you can win a few bucks at the bingo, I will be on hand to take your confession. That all starts next Friday night at the Parish Hall at the Our Lady of the Sacred Spatula Church, 27 Eucharist Way, right downtown. We'll see you there. Nice. Okay. Uh, I don't want to do a disparaging word. Uh, I was watching uh, late night television a couple of nights ago, and they had a commercial for the University of Phoenix. And I thought, oh, uh, go to college in the desert. That would be fun. Then I listened to the rest of the commercial. Apparently, it's an online university. Um, that means that you uh, have uh, sex in the dormitory online from your home. And uh, I, I, I don't know how that works. I, I guess it's good because you're not going through all that social crap with the fraternities and the sororities and the hazing and all that stuff and the drugs and the sex which is basically what college is. So online is not a bad idea, but it's University of Phoenix, man. I, I, I mean, it's probably a wonderful school. Pro a lot of people have gone there and become, well, I don't know what they've become. But I, I, I wondered, what do you do with that? Because, see, I'm not from the generation that had online anything. There was nothing online. There was no such thing. So we had to go places to get an education. We had to physically show up. Uh, so I don't know how this works, but I can't imagine uh, going to a job interview and having the, uh, the, the, the uh, HR person, the home read, uh, human resource person, uh, say, well, are you experienced? Uh, well, uh, uh, yeah, but, uh, do, you, uh, do you have a college education? Oh, yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. I see. And uh, where did you go to school? Uh, the University of Phoenix. What? Get out of here. You know, I, I just, you know. I, <laughs> what do you do? You, you, you print out your diploma on your inkjet printer at home? I don't understand how that works. Do they send you in the mail a robe and a, a cardboard hat? 
Isn't that embarrassing? You go through, you go through 12 years of public school education. I'm pointing at you. And then you, some of you go on to college for two, four, seven, ten years uh, with a, a, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, uh, every degrees you can find. And then you graduate, and what do they make you do? They make you put a robe on and a cardboard square hat. It's almost like we've embarrassed you enough We've wasted most of your life. Now I want you to put this robe on. What? It just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but that's, that's what they do. They make you put a robe on. It's absolutely ridiculous. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I, I don't know why people go to college. I, I'm sorry. That's not a very popular thing to say. But it, it really, I mean, let's be honest. Let's be honest. What you do is... You shell out approximately two hundred thousand dollars to a college, send it in the mail, and they should just send you the diploma and get it over with. Don't put people through four years of sitting there. I mean, seriously, isn't that all it is? I went to New York University, um, and I just uh, every class I had, there were at least a hundred people. The classes were not in a classroom; they were in amphitheaters. Uh, I actually went to a college at New York University to their Institute of Film and Television, and I ended up doing what I went to school for, oddly enough. Who does that? <laughs> so I'm sitting, and uh, just a little side thing, and I'm not bragging, I'm not dropping names. In my class, sitting two seats away from me, in my film class, uh, Sybil Shepard. Sybil freaking Shepard. I never said a word to her. She never said a word to me. Um, but there she was, uh, two seats down. Anyway, all right, I've dropped enough names. For, there were others, but that's, that's it. <laughs> she was the prettiest one. So anyway, uh, they never took roll call because there's like over 100 people there. I never had to really be there. I could have sent somebody in my place if they did take roll call and just, just say, here, and then the guy can leave. I mean... I think for 10 bucks you can get away with that. Uh, all my classes, you didn't really have to be there. Uh, literally, literally, if you had sent them the check, they could have just sent you the diploma, uh, or you could have just waited there until they gave you the thing. That's how silly it was. And unfortunately, when you send your kid to college, uh, they have what they call professors, which is a, a an expensive way of saying teacher. And... Uh, the, the the professors don't teach the classes. They have associates that do. The professors are hired by the colleges and universities to write papers and books. That's what you're paying for, by the way. So it's a little bit odd, a little bit strange, but nobody complains because we don't want to create waves because that's the way it's supposed to be done. I'll tell you something. If you're a child, if you're a parent, if I'm talking to a parent, if your child goes to a technical school and learns how to be a plumber, an electrician, uh, an HVAC, whatever that stands for, uh, all those things, your child will be set for life and living in a mansion somewhere because I'm telling you, baby, that's the way to go. That's the way to go. There's no shame in that. As a matter of fact, that's quite impressive. When I have a plumber come into my house to fix something, I stand back and go, whoa. I don't know how to do that. I couldn't do that. You're special. You know something I don't know and could never know. So I respect that. And respect is what we all need. This is the part of the program where I show you how I should have been Pope because I start pontificating. I, I would be so good at pontificating. That sounded wrong and I don't know why. I can stand out on a balcony... And, and say wonderful things and motivate people wearing a robe and a hat. And then I can go back in the room and everybody can be anointed with knowledge. I could do that job. I could do it well. That's not how it turned out. My first job, if you're interested, 
Uh, my first job was working uh, on Broadway in New York City. I'm from New York. Don't get down on me. Don't, 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 do, your, don't do your little Boston, oh, New York, Boston. Just stop with your Yankee suck stupidity. Everybody sucks, okay? So uh, I, I worked at a place called Broadway Joe Namath's on Broadway, Times Square. For those that are uh, still in diapers, uh, Joe Namath was a quarterback of the New York Jets. He was a bachelor. He was, he was the, the big thing in football back then. And as most people in football do, when they uh, consider retiring at the ripe age of 23, except for Brady, that's a whole different story, uh, what they do is they open up restaurants. <laughs> that's what people in sports do. They open up restaurants. I don't know why, but that's what they do. Like, all of a sudden, they know food. Eh. So he opens up this hamburger joint uh, called Broadway Joe Namath's. And they put, uh, they put an ad in the New York Times, and I see it because I'm looking for work at that point. Because, you know, I was in film and television. I, you don't get jobs like that right away. So uh, I, I actually go down there, and uh, I'm interviewed by this guy. And he said, do you have any experience in being a short-order chef? And I said, sure. And he said, where? And I said, the University of Phoenix Cafeteria. Anyway, so I got the job. And what I did was I put uh, pre-made patties on the grill, flipped them over after about two minutes per side, put them on a bun, slathered a little kind of mayonnaise concoction, some lettuce and a tomato, and I sent it down a chute. I never saw a stitch of anybody public-wise, no customers. I was in a room with a chute. And I would send the hamburgers down the chute. And they were freaking tasty, too. I had that job for three days. Before they found out that I never was a short order chef. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I claimed that I was a doctor. Anyway, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. You don't get your foot in the door unless you stretch the truth a little bit. And if they find out you were, don't, here's, here's, the, here's the key, here's the key, and, and don't let children hear this. Here's the key. Don't lie about anything that you really can't do. That's, that's education. Don't lie about things that you really can't do. If you can really do it, go for it. They're not going to throw you in jail accordingly. Unless there's money involved, in which case, you're in trouble. All right, we're going to uh, start winding this down. I have a lot more than I can talk to you about, but I, I've only signed up for a half an hour program. But here's what I want you to do. Uh, I want you to uh, listen to my, uh, my daily programs on NewEnglandBroadcasting.com or just uh, Google me anywhere, and I'm on every platform as I'm probably standing behind your curtains in the living room. I'm everywhere. I'm omniscient because I'm a doctor. <laughs> uh, you're unbelievable. You really are. You're, you're, I mean, you're a nice person and everything, but seriously. Okay, uh, uh, you take care, uh, and I wish you peace.